Now, let's go back to the place where you've got 11 frightened, ordinary men. And they're hearing their Savior tell them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me, therefore you go. <laughs> and take the gospel into all the world, make disciples of all nations, teaching them everything that I have taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I am with you always. I would think, who is Jesus talking to? I mean, I just betrayed him, denied him three times just a few days ago. How could he be talking to me and telling me I've got to go? Well, here's what Jesus promised. First, that he would be with them. Second, that the same spirit that lived in him, that literally, as Paul says in Romans 8, that raised Jesus from the dead, that same spirit will now be in them and empower them. And third, that they would go with his authority. We talked about spiritual authority, what man gave up at the fall, that he surrendered his God-given authority and came underneath Satan's authority because they obeyed him. And now Jesus said, because of the cross, where we talked about Colossians chapter 2, where he stripped all authority and power from Satan, Jesus now is saying, I have all authority. It has been given unto me, not only in heaven, but also on earth. And because of that, I'm sending you in that authority to go and make disciples. So what is Jesus actually saying to these men? What he's really trying to say to them is, I have made you my disciples. Now you go and do likewise. Make disciples of others who will follow me just as you are following me. And these, in their turn, would also make and multiply disciples until, like today, we have Christ followers in every single nation on earth. And here is a critical truth we must come to grips with when we talk about discipleship. We can call it this. We can say, each one, teach one. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16, and also 2 Timothy 2, 2, we're going to look at those passages. And we're going to see the pattern that Jesus lays out for us. He's explaining God's strategy of how He is going to bring the knowledge of the glory of the Lord on the whole earth, the way the waters cover the sea. The primary purpose of any church leader is to teach, train, equip, and release others into ministry. As leaders, we tend to either not train others or to only train them to serve with us in our ministry. It's the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of me mindset. Let me illustrate from my own life. I went out many, many years ago. One of my first ministry assignments was to plant a church in another nation. So I left with myself and my wife and my four-week-old son and all the possessions we had in the back of a very small truck and we went to plant a church. We got there and the church, basically, our first Sunday was huge. It was explosive. It was amazing. I was there. My wife was there. My four-week-old son was there because he had to be. And I think there were two other people there, and that was just about it on my first Sunday there. Well, God blessed as I kept preaching the gospel and teaching, lifting up the name of Jesus. God blessed. We, people came to Christ. People began to join us in a sense of purpose and mission for what the church was all about. Well, over time... In the first year or so, I realized I want to make some disciples because I want to start some ministries here in the church. And so I began to invest in two young men. One of them was married, one of them was not, and spent a lot of time with them, talked with them, taught them, gave them everything I knew, which was very little. And over time, they were getting ready to start ministry. And I was so excited. We were going to start some new ministries at our church, and I just thought this was going to be the greatest thing. Well, just when I was about ready to start this, I'm, I'm in my office, and I hear a knock on the door. And it's one of these young men. And he comes in. I was so excited to see him. And he's kind of looking down, and 
He seems almost embarrassed or ashamed. And I thought, oh, no, what's happened? And he said, Pastor, I, I, I've been reassigned by my work, and, and I have to go. My wife and I and our children, we need to go to this other community. And uh, I'm so sorry. I know that we were going to start a ministry here with the church, and I, I really want to be here with you, but I have to go. This, I'm being reassigned for work, and I have to, I have to go. And I thought, oh. well, on the outside, I was saying, well, God bless you, brother. I understand. Hallelujah. Be released. Be blessed. And he began to feel better. And he said, hey, I, I want you to know I've already contacted a church there, and I'm going to start the same kind of ministry there at their church. And I just was like, oh, man. And I just felt like yelling at God, how could you do this? Well, I thought, okay, well, I have another disciple. We'll work on that. We'll keep working with him. We'll start this other ministry, and eventually we'll start the other ministry that this other guy. Well, a week later, the other young man comes in, and he said, Pastor, he said, I don't know what to tell you, but God, you've taught us how to hear the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is directing me to move to this other community and to start going to school in this other community. I just thought, oh. And he said, you know, he said, you've taught us so much. And I contacted a church there, and they're wanting to start a college ministry there. And so I'm going to start the same college ministry in their community. Isn't that great? And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that's really great. Hallelujah. Good for you. Oh. So he leaves. And I just, again, I just, as a matter of fact, to my embarrassment, I have to say, I did yell at God. God, what are you doing with my disciples? And all of a sudden, it was one of those moments where there was just sort of this silence. And I thought, huh. and I hear God speak to me. And he says to me, your disciples? And right in that moment, I understood that I do not make disciples for me or for my ministry. I make disciples for Jesus Christ and for the expansion of His kingdom. That is why I make disciples. Not to keep them for me, but to give them away. Some of those disciples will stay, but many will be led by the Holy Spirit to go out. Remember, discipling and discipleship happens at the personal, local level. But the goal and intent, the strategy of discipleship is to reach the whole world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is not just so that I have a better church, more organized, and lots of ministries and good programs. It's so that we can reach the world for Jesus Christ. This is the purpose, God's strategy behind discipleship. Well, now when we look at these scriptures in Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, also 2 Timothy 2, 2, we begin to see this same pattern emerge. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 16. We've already read uh, verse, verse 11 where we see that Jesus gave apostles, uh, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for, verse 12, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And then skip with me down to verse 16 from the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. Paul's using the illustration of the human body to, to show the truth of the body of Christ. What every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. It is not just about us. You see, ministry does not require a position or a title. Every believer in Jesus has a ministry. If you're a Christ follower, you have the Holy Spirit. You have gifts. And you are called by God to use those things, not to sit in the church all the time, but to use them to minister to others. And maybe the Holy Spirit will lead you out. Maybe you'll stay in that local church. But nonetheless... Every believer has a ministry. Pastors, if you are wise and you are obedient to the Word of God, 
you will help the believers, the Christ followers in your church find their gifts, find their ministry, and you will release them into that ministry. Remember the primary purpose of those who are leaders in the body of Christ is to teach, train, equip, and release others into ministry. Paul, in 2 Timothy 2.2, he's talking to Timothy, his young disciple. And he tells Timothy, he says, These things you have heard from me before witnesses, teach them to faithful men, give them to faithful men, that they might be able to teach others. In one verse, we see five groups, if you will, five generations. Paul, witnesses, Timothy, faithful men, and others. Discipleship is not just about just getting one person discipled. Discipleship is about discipling someone so they can disciple someone so they can disciple someone and so on and so on and so on. We are not charged with building our kingdom but rather the kingdom of God. And when you look at what happens in the New Testament, you see an amazing example. In Romans 15, Paul is writing to the church in Rome. And he tells them, verse 19, he says, I have preached the gospel throughout all of Asia and even all the way to Illyricum. And Illyricum, as we know, is modern-day Albania. In other words, Paul had been preaching the gospel, reaching all the way from Jerusalem all the way to Eastern Europe. Now, that's amazing. But here's what we don't think about, but it's true. He is writing to a church, a strong, powerful, grounded church. He is writing to a church in Rome. He had never been there. He had never founded that church. That church in Rome was founded before Paul ever arrived there. How did the gospel get to Rome without Paul, without the great apostle leader, Disciples, disciples, take one faithful man, spend one year pouring your life into that one man, and here's what can happen. An amazing, amazing thing begins to take place. In one year, you pour your life into one man. Well, at the end of that year, you don't break a relationship, but now you're in year two. That other person begins to disciple someone else. You disciple someone else. So at the end of year two, you have both discipled someone else. And this goes on and on. And if you will follow this pattern for 33 years, that's all. Just 33 years. That's just the lifetime of Jesus while he was here on this planet. If you follow that pattern, by year 20, you will have made over a million disciples. Wow. You started with one disciple. At year 20, you are now over a million disciples. By year 30, you have now crossed the threshold and you have a billion, over a billion disciples. By year 33, there will be 8.6 billion disciples. Just in 33 years, discipling one person for one year and that person then becomes a discipler of someone else and so on and so on and so on. The pattern repeats itself. If you do that for 33 years, you will have made more disciples than the number of people who live on this planet. So here's the point. The point is we make disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. Who make disciples. We don't just disciple one. We don't just disciple two. We disciple others so that they would, there in their turn, begin to disciple others. And we continue to disciple as they are discipling. I said to you earlier, I want to say to you again, every person in your church, I'm speaking now to pastors and leaders in the body of Christ, every person in your church should be discipled. And now for all the rest of you that might be watching this teaching, Every one of you should be discipling someone else. You may think, well, I'm just a new believer. I've just come to Christ six months ago. You can still disciple someone else who has just come to Christ 
a month ago. Every person is to not only be disciple, but to also make disciples. The pattern that God uses, why should we make disciples? That's what the question we've been trying to answer. When we look into Scripture, we can see very clearly that God's desire and intent is to reach the whole world with Jesus Christ. And not just reach the world to make converts, but to make Christ followers, disciples, who would stand up under persecution, who no matter what it cost would stand tall for Jesus Christ, who would take Christ into every corner, every part of every society, whether it's education, business, the military, science and technology, that they carry with them the lordship and the power and presence of Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit with them wherever they go. This is not just about ministry. This is about people who are following Christ and who take Christ into all the world that let their light shine before all people. God's strategy to reach our world is through discipleship making. We are to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. We have been talking about why. Why is the story that's here in the scripture. God desires every person on this planet to know him, to love him, to obey him, to worship him. He wants to reach every single person. And the strategy that he has designed is through the making of disciples who will go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he will be with us.